Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of continuing our conversation with Norman Bihar. We talk about coaching and particularly about the how. Welcome, Norman. Gerhard, thank you so much. I know we've spent the last couple of days talking about why to coach and when to coach, but ultimately, you know, sales managers need to know how to coach. So it's a really important topic, and I know we're going to have some great conversation about that. The thing that comes to my mind is that isn't coaching an extension of the corporate mission and vision and value system that companies have? So you're, you're exactly right. Coaching really is, first of all, about a corporation having a coaching culture. If you think about great companies, it really is about developing people, and it can even begin with the CEO. Many of the CEOs in Fortune 500 companies have their own coaches. So if we can basically get away from something that where coaching is viewed as remedial and really focus on coaching as something that's empowering people, it makes all the difference in the world. And then you start to have a coaching mindset where the managers see themselves as enablers. So they're no longer, as I mentioned in an earlier interview, chief problem solvers. They're really motivated to help people grow and develop skills and become the best they can be. So tell me more about the mindset. How should a sales manager look at the salesperson and the coaching challenge? I think that a poor manager often views the salespeople kind of the way they are. And I think a great manager views them based on their potential. So obviously they need a baseline level of proficiency. You want to hire the right people. In fact, that's an area we concentrate is how do you hire the right people? But hiring the right people isn't enough. It then working with that team to really grow and develop them. And I think a lot of managers from the mindset standpoint are challenged because they were once great salespeople themselves. And they have a hard time with the spotlight moving from them to the salesperson, in which case they probably shouldn't have moved into management because coaching is really about the team and the players. So the manager has to be very comfortable that my reward in the future is not going to come through my individual performance, but really through my team's performance and the satisfaction of seeing them grow and develop. So what you're saying is that manager's mindset needs to shift from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. So if there can be the mindset model for the sales rep, because the sales rep is usually frozen into a certain habit. Right, and I think the way they do that is to really develop personalized coaching plans. So ideally, they're working on an assessment with the salespeople to really figure out where can you grow and improve. And those become the basis. We like to think about quarterly development plans that are focused on two to three skills. And so if there's kind of this conscientious effort, both on the part of the sales rep, hey, I really do want to become a better negotiator. I do really want to provide better value to my customers. Those are key skills that the managers can coach on. Once you have the plan, how do you translate that into daily action or weekly action? Uh, how does that work? So there are really three key aspects associated with coaching. One is developing the plan, which we've talked about. The other is really call observation, or if it's an inside sales team, listening in on calls. But as a manager, you really want to observe that salesperson in action and really focus on the two to three skill areas. So I think many managers, again, are tempted to go in and start selling themselves. That's not appropriate. It is appropriate in other circumstances. But from a coaching standpoint, it's really about call observation. And then based on that observation, having a very productive debrief with that salesperson. So what you're saying is that there are really three different types of calls. There's a joint call, a coaching call, and a modeling call. Right. So if you think about the, um, from a coaching standpoint, you really, on a coaching call, the primary goal of the manager is to observe. They may comment briefly, but really let the salesperson do the selling and to take some notes and then focus on a debrief. In a joint sales call, let's say it's a strategic account, it's a public company, we want to hit our numbers at the end of the quarter, we may both want to go in. If you're the manager and I'm the salesperson, we may both want to go in and sell with the goal of closing business. And then you mentioned something very interesting, a modeling call. That's where the manager does the selling and the salesperson watches. Probably not that effective other than with a new salesperson. So modeling would be appropriate with a new salesperson. Joint sales call, we're going to both go in and close business. Coaching call, manager's going to observe, salesperson's going to do the selling. Well, thank you so much, Norman, for uh, making time for this interesting conversation. I personally learned a lot, and I cannot wait to share this. I actually want to blog about this. For anybody who'd like to get more information, go to salesreadinessgroup.com. Thank you, Norman.